So you want to learn how to read some drawings, hmm? Well, you've come to the right place because today we're going to be learning how to read construction drawings with Keenan. Knowing how to read and understand drawings is such an important part of being in the construction and engineering industry. And it's not something that a lot of us have a lot of practice with growing up. Don't worry, I was there too. I was so scared when I first started construction because I just felt like I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to read drawings and I just felt like I was so behind everybody else. But with enough time and enough practice and watching these videos, hopefully you'll be able to fast track your way to being a plan reading savant. So today we're going to be reviewing architectural drawings. All the basics are going to be covered in this video and for sure this can be applied to all different types of drawings whether it's structural, mechanical, plumbing, electrical and so on. And keep in mind that each designer has their own little way of doing things so what I show you in this video will not necessarily look exactly the same on your set of drawings when you enter the industry. But without a doubt, the concepts will be the same, so be sure to watch all the way to the end so that you don't miss anything. And also, if at the end of this video you want me to do another like series thing where I review structural drawing, electrical, whatever, please let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoy these kinds of videos, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe down below so you can join our growing family here on YouTube. So without further ado, let's start looking at some drawings and we'll go into my computer now. So welcome to the computer. So here you're looking at an overall plan view of the project. So you see here there's not a lot of detail, there's not a lot of things going on, but this kind of just shows you just overall broad picture of what's happening. So you'll have your grid lines here, each one, and that kind of shows you the different locations of your project. Um, everything that you do and you lay out on your project will be off of these grid lines. So very important. So grid lines, you'll have each building, and you see how you have each one of these little bubbles here? That is an enlarged plan view. So it just kind of goes deeper, gives you more detail, things like that. So this drawing's purpose is just to show you the overall elements. You don't have too much to go off of. You can't really build off of this, right? So not only do you have your enlarged plan views, but you have something called your elevations and you have your sections. So I'll go over them really quickly. So your your elevation shows you just a straight on view if you were standing here and staring at the building looking that way that's kind of what an elevation would be so if you scroll down here so you see and how you read this is you'll look at your elevation and it says C1 so elevation C1 on sheet A214.1 so since I've already packaged this all together we know that we're down here but you see at the bottom right corner is where you have your sheet number and it was detail C1. So here's your elevation of the building and you see if you were standing and looking straight on into the building that's kind of what you would be looking at. So sections as you can see with this section here and you see how this line kind of continues through and there's this little I don't know nub thing over here that sticks out. So that tells you that you're taking essentially a slice of the job all the way through here looking in this direction. So here your section here is section D1 on A215.1. So you see here A215.1 and then you have your section, sorry as you wait for it to render. So you have your section D point or you have your section D1 and that's your overall section view. Your plan so you have your plan views, your enlarged views, your sections and your elevations. And these are all in very broad terms, so you can't get a lot of detail out of it. So you have to dive a little deeper. So let's go and do that. So here you look at Studio Building G. Here we go, B1, A370.1, and that should give us a little bit more detail of what this building is going to look like. So here we are again, A370.1, B1, right? So that's how everything is very linked together. So here you can see it's a little bit more blown up, you have a little bit more details, a little bit more action going on, but you can see there's actually more enlarged plans within this enlarged plan. So the key to drawings is you want to figure out and try to see how you can build things on your own if you were to go out and do it yourself. So if you don't have enough information in the drawings for you to actually go out and physically know what to do, then you need to ask more questions, you need more details in the drawings. Well, let's dive into this little enlarged plan here so you can get an idea of what so you can get an idea of what the real details you're looking for um, in these drawings because you still don't have enough here to determine what you're going to be building. So here we go. Enlarged plan view is B1 
A373.3. So we've arrived, we're like two drawings deep, right? Between your regular overall view, then you're enlarged, and then you're enlarged within your enlarged. So this is where you have the real details, right? So now you can see that you have dimensions for walls, you have a little bit more details about where, where this louver is going to be, um, where this window is going to be, the center line of the window, um, <clears throat> what kind of walls they are. So you have a lot more that you can go off to actually figure out how things are going to get built. So other things you want to look at in this drawing besides your dimensions is you want to check out this bottom over here. So in all of your drawings, you want to check out the general notes. The general notes will help clarify some extra information that may not be apparent when you first look at this drawing. So here, so here you have the general note that says refer to sheets A301.1 and A301.2 for typical floor plan notes. So that will tell you some other notes and more information that you have to apply to this drawing. 601.1 for interior wall types. So that will give you more information on, say, these walls here. So 1A, uh, the EWs would be exterior walls, so that would be in a different one. Um, this one here will is a certain type of wall type. So that's what A606.1 should tell you. A606.2 for exterior partition. So that tells you where to go for these details. Three, your A372.1 is your first floor reflected ceiling plan. And a reflected ceiling plan tells you your ceiling heights. So it's a downwards view of where all your ceilings are going to be and how far they are off of the finished floor. A604.1 for the room finish schedule. So room finish schedule or just a schedule is basically a table of everything that of, of additional information that you need for the job. So a room finish schedule will tell you what is what type of floor is in the unit or what the wall finish is going to be, um, what the ceiling finish is going to be things like that. So as you can see, you have to read these notes and it can direct you to other drawings where you can get more information that you don't currently have. So going back to this drawing, let's let's dive a little bit deeper into some of this stuff, right? So let's kind of look at, okay, what is a type 1A wall, right? Or what is a type 1 wall? What, are we, what does that really look like? So you'll go down to the general notes and it directs you to the 606.1 page, right? So here we are, A8, A606.1 and you want us to look up wall type 1A and wall type 1. So what do those really look like? So you zoom into these details, so see a type 1 wall, type 1A wall. It looks like the only difference is the type of stud that's in the wall. A 3 and 5 eighths or a 6 inch 25 gauge stud. So, and you can kind of see it depicted in the drawing. This is a little bit of a smaller stud. That's a little bit of a wider stud. This kind of just shows you what, what the wall is really going to look like. Exterior walls, so let's see what in the world is an EW1. So again going into those exterior wall details. So EW1, very cool. So you see how there's this little curb here, this uh, what is this four inch tall curb. So you wouldn't know right looking at these drawings on the plan view that all these walls need to sit on a curb. Now, if you were in construction for a while, you know that all your exterior walls, you should be lifting them up because you, for water reasons, right? But these are, these are the details that you look at to confirm how high is the curb, how wide do you want it to be? And one thing just for a general tip of the day for construction, so one thing that you look at is the width of this curb. Concrete doesn't have the same tolerances and the same level of accuracy as metal framing or you know interior wall framing so if you try to plan for perfection when you do these curbs you're going to end up chipping out or have filling in these edges so just keep those kinds of things in mind when you review these details it really matters at the end of the day when you're out there like shaving off you know quarters of an inch or half of an inch just so that you can make some of these details work and you can discuss that with the designer and things like that as the contractor just because you should know what your building tolerances should be. We know where our wall types are. We know some dimensions here. So okay, what, what kind of doors are in here, right? So we're going to have to go into our schedules now. So let's take a look at this door. Door G113A. So door G113A, right? So you see how the schedule is set up as just a table, right? You have your you have your room name, your door number, your room name, your 
type, width, height, thickness of door. So all this information for your door. So 113A, counselor's office. So this is a type D door. So type D door means that, so you look on the side, is there a D here? Okay, so vision panel, single door, right? So it gives you a little bit more details of what this door should look like as a type D door. Um, okay, G113A, three foot wide by seven foot by inch and three quarter thick. Um, the finish by the manufacturer. So usually when you have some a glass door, the architect will defer to the glass manufacturer on how they really want this door to be constructed because they'll have their certain ways of doing it. Um, when it's hollow metal or wood, you have a little bit more control over that kind of thing. So they'll, they'll actually specify what they really are looking for. But in this case, they're not. So aluminum, aluminum. And then you have some of these door details now. So you see on this different page, it tells you what the detail will be at the head of the door, the jam, and the threshold, which becomes very important when you have different finishes, right? So if you have carpet on this side or concrete on this side, how do they want those two finishes to, to finish out? It becomes more important when you have tile like greater thicknesses, just so that you can get those flooring transitions to marry out the way that you want. So again, as well, you have your schedule notes, what each thing means, AL is aluminum, your frame construction, you'll have some extra notes here that you have to make sure that you're following, right? So hollow metal doors and window frames shall be packed 100% full with mineral wool or grout. So these are things that you need to know. You need to make sure that you're reading through all these notes because if you skip over this, you might miss some of the stuff that you're supposed to be installing for the project. And that's just one door. So imagine you have to do this for every door on the job. Okay, so now you know that okay, you have to check out your doors, check out your windows, look at the schedule and figure out all those details and make sure that you understand all of that. So now we're looking at, okay, what are these extra details here? So here's the column details. So let's go to 800.3 on B1. So we'll split this again. So here's your column detail down here, right? B1. So this shows you exactly how you're supposed to frame it, what kind of framing you're going to need and how that will then transition to the finish on the other side because you can see you have stone to probably ephus up here. Right? So now we want to figure out what kind of finishes are in this unit. What is the floor? What's on the walls? So if you remember, if you were listening earlier, we're talking about the room finish schedule. So let's check that out. All right, so again, the schedule is just a table. And let's take a look at this counselor's office, G113. So you'll look at this, so the floor, the floor in G113 is CPT3A. Okay, so what in the world is CPT3A? Anything here? Paint all exposed surfaces, rubber transitions at all transitions. So again, right, read all these finished schedule notes, but I don't see anything in here about that. So there must be another schedule out there, which will be the just the regular finished schedule that tells you what all of these callouts really mean. All right, so here's the material finish schedule. So CPT3A is a Shaw carpet tile, 18 by 36, So and, and it's Ignite tile with this sort of type. And then you've got a product number. This is where you need to go to to figure out what all of those things mean. So I think it called out for PT1 on the wall, so it's a Sherwin-Williams pure white, and this is the paint number field color for walls. So that can give you an idea now of what's exactly in this specific room. And you can do the same thing for the janitor room and things like that. So now we have a better idea, okay, of all the finishes in here, where all these walls are going to go, what each wall type is, and then we'll, figure, we'll finish out with some extra details here. So like, let's check out this section here, A375.3, leave no stone unturned. So again, you're making a little cut through here. So you can see here is the doorway here, I believe. This is this column right here, right? This column going up, here's the second floor. So this gives you a little bit more of an idea. Here's your little curb that we were looking at earlier for the wall types, right? And then it shows you even the ceiling in here, what that height's going to be. And then this is the column on here. So you can see how this gives you a better idea of really what you're trying to build. So yeah, that's kind of all there is to it. 
Well, well, so yeah, so you just basically repeat this process for every single area of the project. And researching it again as if someone were to tell you, hey, go out and finish the counselor's office. You would need to know where all your walls are, what kind of walls they are, what is the stud size, what kind of board is on there, what kind of paint are you putting on there, what's the ceiling height. All of those questions you would need to know in order for you to build it, and that's how you're supposed to be reviewing these drawings. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any further comments, please comment below or any sort of feedback on how I portrayed this video if you think I could do anything better. As you can see, reviewing drawings takes a lot of time. I mean, we focused on just one little section and we actually don't even have all the information of that one small part of the building. So the more plans that you read, the more time that you dedicate to trying to hone your craft of reading drawings, the better you'll be. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can join our growing family here on YouTube. Thank you so much, I really appreciate your time and I'll see you on the next video.